You know what Slim just told me? Devon come up dead. She was shot one in the mouth, one in each tip. You still want to talk true string? Avon Boxdale, one of the characters this show is built on. Shit, outside of Omar Little, Avon is probably the most iconic name in the entire series. Avon was that king who stayed the king. See, the king stayed a king. Unlike some of his peers, not naming no names. <laughs> Marlo. My name is my name. Avon had a certain type of love and respect for the game. He tried his best to honor its rules. Willing to honor the Sunday truce. Just never on no Sunday, man. Even though String fucked that up. <laughs> mm. Reluctant to hurt any police, which is smart. Anytime any fool do something like shoot the police, it's bad on everyone. And always put in family first. <laughs> we're doing good. You know, if you say we're doing good. Now, we all know Avon was great at being a gangster, great at being a hustler. You know, I'm just a gangster, I suppose. But that wasn't his only talent. He had another skill. Now, to the naked eye, you might have missed it. But Wire fans know. Avon Boxdale was a fucking poet. He has some of the deepest quotes in the entire series. I mean, shit, he might have the deepest quote in the entire series. <laughs> This man was spitting hot fire all five seasons. Because I spit hot fire. The fact that Wood Harris doesn't have an Emmy for his portrayal of Avon Boxdale, as Stephen A would say, it's blasphemy. <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> ah, sh shit, I had to get that shit off my chest. This man deserves his flowers. Make sure y'all got notifications on. I got a whole video dedicated to the Emmys and their bullshit. I had to get that off my chest, y'all. All right, now back to the video. Today, I had the impossible task <laughs> of breaking down Avon Boxdale's top five quotes. Like always, y'all, if I'm missing one or you're not happy with the list, get in the comment section. I look forward to chopping it up with you. But first, like always, big rich in this bitch, Bodie Brodus, start this shit off for us. Hey, y'all know what it is. Brick City's finest, J.D. Williams, a.k.a. Bodie Brownish, y'all already know what it is. Chilling with Big Rich right here on the Chop Shop. Make sure y'all hit them likes, subscribes, do all this stuff. But we'll get with y'all later. Y'all already know. Peace. I say let bygones be bygones, but fuck all them East Side bitches. One of the best quotes and most satisfying scenes in the entire series. Shit, the only scene more satisfying than this is when Cheese got killed. But now, nigga. Outside of that, Avon crashing Marlo and Sergey's meeting is fucking priceless. Look how uncomfortable Marlo is. Squirming around in his chair to that weird ass, awkward ass smile. <laughs> you can tell this man don't smile often. I mean, these two actors handled this shit brilliantly. Avon burst onto the scene, big smile on his face. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Marlo was such a control freak. And the second he sees Avon, all control is thrown out the window. Because this shit can go a million different ways. The second Avon sits down, he starts working Marlo. Kind of suns him a little bit. Whatever business you're trying to do through the Russian, you got to go through me first. Yeah? Yeah. And then Avon drops the quote. Cause up in this bitch here, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm what you might consider an authority figure. He's somewhat of an authority figure. Of course he is. You Chris and Snoop do all this research on Sergey, but you don't think to look up if Avon Park still shares the same prisonism? So then he asked me if I knew Marlo. I tell him, hell yeah, I know Marlo real well. Avon wasn't no dumb dumb. Every line Avon spits this visit is just him playing chess with Marlo. Let me help you find your tongue. You trying to get to the Russian so you can get a line to his people. You trying to get to the Greek motherfuckers because if you can, you want to cut proposition join all them other east side bitches out the connect. I mean, really think about this shit. This scene made me think about Avon's future. 
This scene just confirms that once Avon is out, he will be right back in the position he was. See, the king stay the king, all right? He has a direct line to that good shit. Now that he's friends with his new BFF, Sergey, Avon's move here was genius. Willing to squash the beef, put things aside. West side definitely need to stick together, you know what I mean? And all the fuss about you coming at me. I say let bygones be bygones, but fuck all them east side bitches. I mean, just think when he's out. Prop Joe is no longer his competition. He now has a relationship with Marlo. And shit, even with Marlo now being out the game, he had a relationship with Slim Charles. This ain't about your motherfucking business class either. It ain't that part of it. I believe this was the beginning of the end of Stringer and Avon's relationship. Avon ain't no dummy. Yeah, he's behind bars. Yeah, he's limited to what he can see in the streets. But at the end of the day, he ain't no fucking idiot. Stringer came to him, letting him know how everything played out with Brother Mazzone. Of course, it was all bullshit, because Stringer Bell orchestrated it. But Mazzone not saying who did that shit. You asked him who it was? Yeah, I asked him. Why? Stringer tried to explain himself using big words and a little bit of that business savvy that he just learned from that community college. Man, every market-based business runs in cycles, and we're going through a down cycle right now. String. He tried to kick all that knowledge to Avon, and Avon cut him off mid-fucking sentence and let him know. This ain't about your motherfucking business class either. It ain't that part of it. It's that other thing. We can't handle this civil. We can't handle this like adults. The street is the street, always. You drop the ball on this, our muscles gone, we're weaker than what we started. You can tell with the street aspect of this, Stringer Bell was in over his head. I really wish these two would have parted ways and Stringer Bell would have handled the business side of this and Avon Boxdale strictly handled the street side of this. You run it as you see fit. At least till I get home, you do. That would have been an ideal way for these two to come to an end. Then you go to give your man a pound and this is how he responds. Yes, man. Us. But you ain't done shit else. You know what I'm saying? So what you gonna do? I mean, this quote right here is part of the reason why I love this show as much as I fucking do. And scenes like this is why this show will stand the test of time and be here forever. Slim and Cuddy ran down on Marlo's crew as instructed. <laughs> Like Cuddy said, he had homeboy in his sights and could have lit his ass up. And on top of that, Cuddy had motive. Yo, I know that nigga, man. Yeah? Owe me money, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Homie right here fucked him over out of some paper. Robbed him, actually. So Cuddy had every reason to let him have it. And him showing restraint, him not doing it, like I said, are reasons why I love this fucking show. Instead of Cuddy leaving, he approaches Avon and keeps that shit a hundred. The game ain't in me no more. None of it. Now, when Avon responds, Avon could have been a dick. But you ain't done shit else. You know what I'm saying? So what you gonna do? Could have told him no. Could have argued with him. Could have asked for his money back for the package he fronted him when he came home. Could have done all that shit. But no. All right, then. We straight. Avon handled that shit with respect. He shook his hand and let him leave. Now the quote is this shit right here. Slim Charles, he was a man in his day. Nah! Say your shit, Avon. Say it! He a man today. Say it again! He a man today. Yeah, man. He's a man today. There's so much negativity that we talk about in this show that we have to give the positive moments their just due as well. And this is one of them. This shit deserves a standing fucking ovation. But I got a question for y'all. 
Do you think Avon was a little bit jealous of Cuddy? Avon has all the money in the world. He can walk out this game clean tomorrow if he wanted to. I mean, let's keep it a buck. Most players in this game end up dead or in jail. Do we have any reason to believe that this would end differently for Avon? Avon knows it. I swear, y'all, I've said this shit a million times. This goddamn show is a masterpiece. We the Trump brothers. Man, you don't get this shit up? We're gonna turn everything we built to shit. This was the final nail in the coffin for Avon and Strange's relationship. I mean, real shit, this whole conversation was flawless. It was like with every word, Avon was sticking the knife in. I wanna highlight a couple other things that was said before we get to my quote, just to prove my point a little. <laughs> First off, the Chump Brothers, that shit was low. Uh, the Chump Brothers. If the last one didn't piss String off, this one definitely did. I see a man without a country. Not hard enough for this right here. A man without a country? Do you know how low that shit is? I personally don't think he was a man without a country. I think he was Boxdale through and through. Yeah, he did some shady fucked up shit. <laughs> he rain major. But I still believe he was Boxdale through and through. So to me, that man without a country shit is another low blow. Now we get to the quote. As if those two things we just talked about wasn't bad enough. You know the difference is between me and you? I bleed red. You bleed green. What you been building for us? I bleed red. You bleed green. Woo! He shouldn't be spitting fire like this. <laughs> I mean, that is such a low thing to say to your man. As if all he cares about is the money, which might be true. But I'm pretty sure he got love for you, Avon. Didn't he just break you out of prison? Didn't that shit just happen two episodes ago? What the fuck? <laughs> What's up, baby? Oh. What up, man? Woo. Now we're moving on to number one, and if you're a fan of the show, you already know where we're going with this. He scared you, don't he? You know, I'm just saying. He scares me. This number one statement might be the number one quote in the entire series. It's really not talked about enough how brilliant this scene was. How heartbreaking, how painful. It was all of those emotions in one. I mean, he takes D'Angelo, to go see his brain dead father at some rundown fucked up ass nursing home. There's absolutely no reason this scene should be as good as it is. Live the life, leave the life, ain't no big thing. He used to talk that shit all the time and he believed it, you know what I'm saying? What's up baby, talk that shit now. I feel like this scene should be hanging in an art gallery or some shit. I believe the reason he took D'Angelo here is to tell him, yo young and look, you just beat a murder charge. You can't play him out of that lobby. You can't take a beating neither. So the first thing you do, you get all emotional. Slow the fuck down before you end up here like my father. All it takes is one fuck up, one mistake. He is my reality check. You only got to fuck up once. Be a little slow, be a little late, just once. That at any time, one mistake, one slip up, one fuck up, I can be right here next to him. And how you ain't gonna never be slow, never be late. Again, like I said, it's just, it's just perfect. There's no other word to describe it. You can't plan for no shit like this, man. It's life. How you never gonna be slow, never gonna be late. How you not gonna mess up one time? Scares me. But when you really listen to the knowledge this man is kicking, I mean, oh my God. Ah oh man, but that's it y'all, this is number one. This is Avon Boxdale's top five quotes. I know I missed a couple. You know, I'm just a gangster, I suppose. Yeah, this is business. The street is the street always.
This is my top five, and I'm sticking with it. If you got any complaints, you got any issues with it, get in the comment section. I look forward to chopping it up with you. I do got more Wire content dropping soon, and if you're new to the channel and you still haven't subscribed yet, and you still here, check out some of the other work and hit that red button, y'all. Like always, Big Rich, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all next time.